Hello everybody, my name is Reza Dorani and uh, this is part two of my delegation video with SharePoint. And uh, in this video, we are gonna see how to work with date columns in SharePoint. So if we go back to our delegation functions based on docs.microsoft.com, as you know, date time functions, if I use them in filter operations, uh, it is not delegable. If I use them in sort operations, they are delegable as you can see. So if I head back to my Power App, and this is the same app that we had before, I added a few things uh, because I wanted to uh, pre-create things for this demo. So let's look at the filter condition for the gallery currently. In my SharePoint list of students, I had a column for enrolled date, which is a date time column. And as you can see, it has the enrollment date for all the students. In the Power App for this gallery, the filter function that we are using is filter the students list where the enrolled date is less than seven days from today. So let's say that's your requirement wherein you need to know which students have enrolled in the last seven days days okay that's my that's my requirement so if i if i update my query to to show the students that have enrolled in the last seven days right i have i have if i play this app so it's showing me from eight so it's showing me all the dates let's check this one out so enrolled date as you can see is less than today minus seven, sorry, it should be greater than today minus seven. So this is gonna show me all the students who have been enrolled in, in the last seven days. Now in this case, as you can see, I'm getting no results. Let's change this to the last 20 days. So let's say I want to know who are the students who have enrolled in the last 20 days. And as you can see, there are students who've enrolled on the 14th, which is good. Now, if you look at the results set again, I have a delegation warning. Why is there a delegation warning out here? The reason for the delegation warning is, is because the, I am trying to use filter operation with a date field. And as per the documentation, you cannot use a date with filter. And as you can see, it says, look at number four. And if you look at number four, uh, date time functions are not delegable exception of this one unique case. Now, if we head back to the Power App, so this is an issue, right? There's a delegation issue. And the problem is that, let's say, if I go back to my student list, and let's say I have a student that's sitting beyond my delegation limit. In this case, for this specific use case, we have set the delegation limit to 50. So I would like to highlight this. And heading back to my list, let's say student sitting at position number 84, I am going to change the enrolled date for this student to the uh, 21st of August. So he is within that time range. And uh, so I've changed him to 21st of August. If you also notice, I have another field called enrolled date number. It's a number field and I'll get to this later. But in this number field, what I'm doing is I'm going to store the date in number format in the following uh, in the following pattern. It's going to have the year, then it's going to have the two digit month, and then it's going to have the date again in two digits. So year, month, and the day. I'm going to save this. Okay. So I just added, uh, I just changed the enroll date for student at position number 84. Now, if I head back to my app and if I was to just, this is just for demo purposes, if I was to refresh this data source, and uh, if I was to change my query to show all the students who have enrolled in the last seven days, ideally it should show up that student, but as you can see it, it does not show up that student. And the reason is because enrolled date is a date field and the delegation does not work with date columns. And my delegable limit was set to 50. So it will only search in the first 50 items of this data source. If I was to go back to this data source and change the enroll date for a student who's sitting in the first 50 items. So let's say I change this one to the 
23rd which is within the date range for the last seven days i'm going to change this again 2019 I'm going to save this now if i head back to my power app and if i was to refresh this the same query although it is has a delegation warning it will return a result because it's only going to work in the first 50 records because my delegation limit is set to 50 if it was 500 it will only search in the first 500 records so this is a problem, right? For large data sets, this is not going to work and currently date fields are not delegable. I know this is on the roadmap because at uh, SharePoint conference, I had the opportunity of talking to the product team and they did mention that date time functions are uh, on the roadmap and very soon date functions are going to be delegable. But in the interim, since date functions are not delegable, what do we do? As you can see, number fields are delegable with filter right here. Right? They are delegable. So what we can do in this case is whenever you are storing information for the date, right? Ideally, you'd be doing it through a Power Apps form. What you could also do is when the user picks the date, you can also store the number equivalent of that date in a peculiar format. And that format, if you notice when I manually entered it through the Power App, that format, this can be a number field, hidden field. And what I'm doing out here is I'm storing it in this format, the year, the month, and the day, right? That's how I'm storing this. Now by storing it in a number field, what I'm able to achieve is the fact that I can now query this without having to run into delegation issues, okay? So instead of querying the enrolled date field, I'm gonna query the number field. The extra work that I got to do is I need to ensure that I have another field that I create that's called number. That's the first thing I have to do. Second, I need to also ensure that whenever enroll date is added or updated, this field is updated as well because this is the field I'm going to use for my queries. Now in my case, for all my students, what I've gone ahead and done is I've also added this date field, okay? So now if we head back to the Power App, okay? And let's say I want to do the same thing. I want all the students who have enrolled in the last seven days. So this time, instead of using this field, I am going to change this to enrolled date number field. Now I need to get today minus seven in numeric format. Today is going to give me today's date minus seven. It's going to go seven days behind from today. So how do I do this, right? So if I go back to my app, I'm just trying to steal a formula or nothing else. So if I go back to my app and come back to the same query, right? I am going to replace this with this. So what have I done here? Let's, let's try and understand this, right? I'm saying where the enrolled date is greater than, I'm taking today's date, subtracting seven days from today, then I'm formatting it in exactly the same format that I'm using in my backend, uh, list as a column, right? I'm storing it in a numeric format as year, month, and day, correct? And then as you can see, once I format this date in that format, I'm converting it into a value because I want the numeric value for it. So I will get that value. Now the problem is this is also throwing a delegation warning. That's because I'm trying to do these calculations value today within the context of a filter operation. So what I can do as you can see on start of the app itself, this is the app.onStart function. I am setting a variable which says today minus seven, formatted as year, month, day, converted into a value and store it in this variable called where date from. And now in my query, I'm gonna replace this whole thing with where date from. Right? And the delegation warning disappears. Why? Because I'm doing the calculation beforehand. I'm not doing it in the filter operation, which is again, best practice, right? I don't have to keep doing the calculation on the fly. I already have the date set right here. And now, as you can see, there is no delegation warning. And if I look at this, it will now, so I'm saying, show me everything where the enrolled date number is greater than this. So let's first run on start again. And now this is going to set that field and it is going to set it to this value as you can see because I just put a label here to show you what it will set it to. Uh, if I change this to where date from, 
This is it, 2019, 8-18. That's a week from today. Today, right now, while I'm recording this video, is the 25th of August. This is the 18th of August. So it's gone seven days back and it's converted, converted it to numeric format. Cool? That's why I just added this label. So what it is going to do now, it's gonna go and look at everything in the students list where the enrolled date number field is greater than this number. Right? And because I've stored the dates in that format, there is no delegation warning and this works. It's showing me everything. It's showing me all the items that are spanning beyond my delegation limit. So no problem, right? We've solved delegation. That's one. Number two, what if I have a date range that I want to give my users to filter on? So as you can see, I created a section out here which has a from date and which has a to date, right? So here's date from, here's date to. Now, how do I change my query so the user can pick a range and automatically it will filter the students list and show me all the students enrolled between that date range. So in this case, what I've done is on start of the app, I have done two things. First, I have this variable that I'm setting, which is less than seven days from today. And then I have a second variable that I'm setting, which is today's date, both of them formatted in this format, which is year, month, day. So I've got two variables. And I'm gonna run this app to show you the values in these variables. So as you can see, if I go to global, variable date from, which is seven days from today, that's the 18th of August, and date two, which is the 25th of August, both of them in numeric format. Then what I've done is I have two date columns that I have created, a from date and a to date. The from date is defaulted to today's date minus seven, the to date is defaulted to today, okay? And that is exactly the same setting that I have for these two variables when the app loads. So they all are going to be in sync, right? When I run, run this, I have the variables also set to the same date. Now what I want to also do is when the user changes these fields, I want those variables to be updated. So how am I doing that? If you pick the date column and if you look at on change event for this date column, what I'm doing is I'm resetting the variable to date from dot selected date. That is the same field dot selected date and I am formatting it. That's it. So whenever the user changes this, it will also change this variable, which is date from. And whenever the user changes date to, I am also, if you look at the on change property of this, I'm doing exactly the same thing here. I'm setting date to based on date to the variable based on the selected value in this. And now if I want to change this so that it matches that date range. I'm going to do it in this fashion. So give me everything from the students list where the enrolled date number is greater than or equal to the from date and the enrolled date number. Again, I'm focusing on the number field only. Why? Because that's the only field that will not give me the delegation warning. Date will give me a delegation warning. Is less than so the from date is greater than or equal to today and it is less than or equal to the second variable, which is variable date two. That's it. So now if I was to play this app, you will notice that let's go again and let's try and rerun this. I'm going to run on start. Okay. Run my on start. I'm going to come back here. Let's say I change my from date. So let's say I pick second of July and I'm going to say all the way to 31st of July. So this now should filter all my results. So let's look at variables. So this is the 25th of August. So I did not change the variable to date. So let's change this again. Let's change this to 30th. So this will change the to date. Okay. So as you can see, now it is only querying the results based on the date range that I selected. Right, so it's going to show me only the students that I enrolled between the 2nd of August, I'm sorry, the 2nd of July and the 30th of July. And this is the list and there is no delegation warning. So if I want to see all the students for the month of uh, August, very easy. Just go August 1st all the way through August 31st. This will perform the operation, again, delegation not happening on the date fields, but the number field that I created. So this is a trick that you can use to query results or data sources that span beyond the delegation limits specifically related to the date fields. 
Thank you so much for watching.